Ben's log. Guybrush Threepwood. Lost at sea for days now. I have no crew or navigational instruments. No provisions except a half-eaten corn dog, and unless I find water soon, I'm surely done for. Only the hope of finding my love, Elaine, keeps me going. Well, my quest for the fabulous treasure called Big Whoop has left me in this sorry state. I thought it would bring me fame and glory. Instead, it delivered me into the clutches of my enemy, the zombie pirate LeChuck. I had thwarted his evil plot to marry Elaine, and he was after revenge. Uh, really, really thirsty now. If only I could have a small drink of fresh water, I might have the strength to sail on. Oh, but I know there's nothing but ocean for miles and miles. If I could reach land, I might find water and some food. Fruit, maybe. Something to fight off the scurvy and help me get my strength back. Hmm, maybe some bananas. Oh, why do I torture myself like this? I might as well wish for some chicken and a big mug of grog for all the good it'll do me. Oh, my sweet Elaine. Am I cursed to starve here on this ocean without seeing your face just one more time? Am I... I just don't feel that way about you. Elaine? By my congealed blood, you'll learn to love me. Sail with me, and I'll make you queen of the dead. I, I can't. I'm washing my hair tonight. Blast be your hair, woman! Can't you see that this salty old sea corpse pines for your every gentle caress? You know, I don't think my father would approve of me dating the undead. And you're probably too nice a zombie pirate for me anyway. Let's just be friends instead. Chuck, you're an evil, foul-smelling, vile, codependent villain, and that's just not what I'm looking for in a romantic relationship right now. Darn your riddles, you saucy female! What do you mean? Ow! Oh! 
You're a bloodthirsty monster who's already kidnapped me once, tortured my friends, and taken from me the only man I ever loved. Guybrush Threepwood. Ah, <sighs> how romantic. Ship ahoy! Threepwood! Fish him out. Guybrush? Guybrush, Threepwood. By my gangrenous gut, I don't know how you escaped my carnival of the damned. But you won't escape the taste of my blade! <laughs> has spirit -y. Throw him in the hole and I'll finish him after the battle. Turn loose the long boats! And prepare the flaming voodoo cannonball! get out of here and help Elaine. If I could only get through this one door, well, then I could easily overpower the armed guards above, slip over the side, and make for the shore. Quit your mumbling, captive! Blast ye scurvy dogs! Stay away! I'm Guybrush Threepwood. Who are you? I'm the evil pirate Bloodnose, the wickedest fiend ever to sail under the banner of King Death. I'd as soon chew your nose off as look at you. Are you wearing a fake beard? Bloodnose the pirate would not have a fake beard. Yes, it is. It's been glued to your ear hair. Actually, it's a highly sophisticated beard weave, made from the chest and back hair of real pirates. I'm hoping it'll take root if I don't wash it for a while. Hey, wait a minute. You're not a pirate. Wally! Don't you recognize me? It's Guybrush Threepwood. Oh, gee. Hello, Mr. Wood. The last time I saw you, we were prisoners in LeChuck's dungeon. Why would you sign on with the Ship of the Living Dead? Well, Mr. Brush, at first I had some misgivings about it. But thanks to LeChuck's seminars, motivational lectures, and audiobooks on Parrot, I've become a vicious Corsair. You can too. Ask me how. I'm not in the mood for sales hype. Here. At least take this literature. You may change your mind. You're a failure as a pirate. Shut your trap, you yellow-bellied blowfish. One more peep out of you, and I'll do you in. Peep. Yes, scabra swab. One more word, and I'll let you have it. Word. That's it. I'm gonna blast you. I'm gonna... I'm gonna... <laughs> oh, I can't do it. I just can't. <laughs> You're right, Mr. Wood. I'm just not a pirate. I'm not ferocious or bloodthirsty or hateful or anything. I'm not even... I'm not even unpleasant. Oh! Oh, there, there. <laughs> Oi! You're getting a little flashback! Oops. Watch where you're shooting! That was me. Uh, sorry. Oh, you 
Hey, I'm getting pretty good at this. Ooh, gross. All the bones and stuff are floating towards the ship. <laughs> I can't quite squeeze past this cannon. Can I call you Bob? You may call me Murray. I am a powerful demonic force. I am the harbinger of your doom. And the forces of darkness will applaud me as I stride through the gates of hell, carrying your head on a pike. Stride? All right, then roll. Roll through the gates of hell. Must you take the fun out of everything? You know, you look great with a melting candle on your forehead. I get the feeling you're not taking me very seriously. No, I am, really. Really? Then let me hear you scream in terror. Eek. <laughs> Why do you villains always laugh so much? I wasn't laughing about anything in particular. Somewhere there's a fish nibbling on my foot and it really tickles. You're about as fearsome as a doorstop. Is it a really evil looking doorstop? Uh, never mind. Was your mother's father bald too? I'm not bald. I just have a really high widow's peak. Well, at least now you never have to worry about what to wear. Well, I suppose that's true. And accessorizing is really easy. That's also true. And I look good in hats. There you go. How can you see without eyeballs? How can you walk around without a brain? Some things no one can answer. I'm going now. Good. Now leave me alone. I have a lot of scheming and evil plotting to do. <laughs> well, they've messed with the wrong skull this time. <laughs> Hey, that's my arm! Give that back! Haha! <laughs> 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 Taste cold steel, feeble cannon restraint rope! <laughs> Now, with the demon flames of this voodoo cannonball, I'll blast my significant other into the significant other world! <laughs> That'll show her how much I truly care. <laughs> Neptune's navel! That was a close one! I lost my cutlass when the ship capsized. It's a bag of wooden nickels. Some treasure. Hey, there's a big diamond ring behind this bag. Guybrush? Guybrush! I thought I'd lost you forever! Is it really you? Yes, Elaine. Um, did you really mean what you said out there? That I was the only man you ever loved? Uh, well, yes, Guybrush, I guess I did. Elaine, I'm a man of action. A swashbuckler, a rogue, a wanderer, a man who can hold his breath for ten minutes. I have no ties and no regrets. I sail with the wind and go where adventure takes me. But somehow, something always Guy leads Brush, me. Guybrush, stop babbling. Elaine, will you marry me? Oh, Guybrush. Oh, Wally? You're alive! But how did you survive the explosion? I was thrown clear. I'm just lucky I wasn't wearing my seatbelt. Wow, Elaine, that's some ring. Thank you, Wally. 
It's an engagement ring from Guybrush. Hey, that looks just like the big diamond ring that Chuck had in his treasure hold. You know, the one with that ghastly, disfiguring voodoo curse on it. Well, I'm sure Guybrush wouldn't have given you that ring. Anyway, I've got to be going. I hear there's a tattoo removal place on this island that's freckle safe. See you at the wedding. Guybrush! Ah. Uh... Oh no! Elaine? She's not gonna be happy about this. Ouch! Oh, it's just you again. Just your most terrifying image of evil revisited. Yeah, right. I bring you warning from the infernal realms. Do not go farther into the swamp. Turn back. Turn back. Darkness will envelop you. How'd you get all the way up there? Through sheer force of will. Uh-huh. All right, there was a bunch of those weird voodoo kids. They found me on shore and put me on top of this spike all the time thinking they were so funny. Do you need me to help you down? Help! I need no help from you foolish mortals. I am Murray, the all-powerful demonic skull. Okay, just thought I'd ask. Don't get me wrong, I do appreciate the offer. What are you doing up there? I am standing as a testament. Standing? Hanging as a testament to the power of the forces of evil that will one day claim victory over the entire Earth! How long are you going to keep doing that? As long as it takes! Must get pretty dull up there, I suppose. Never! The powers of darkness are never dull! We will one day prove that... Oh, who am I trying to fool? I'm bored out of my skull. Figuratively speaking, of course. You seem restless. Oh, I don't know. It's just that not many people come through this swamp. What would you rather be doing? I need to be out among the lesser people, terrifying them and causing pain and misery. That would make you happy? Yes, happy in a dark demonic way. Do you know anything about lifting curses? Oh, right. I know a lot about lifting curses. That's why I'm a disembodied talking skull sitting on top of a spike in the middle of a swamp. You seem bitter. I'm sorry. It's been a rough day. I'd love to stay and chat, but uh, I gotta go. Who are you, and how did you just appear like that? I am one gifted with a second sight, adept at manipulating the forces of nature for the benefit of all who enter my door. You're a fashion consultant. Well, yes, but that's not what I was referring to. I am a voodoo priestess. Neat. You're an autumn, by the way. Don't I know you from somewhere? We have known each other for a very long time, Guybrush Threepwood. You've been through much, so it is understandable that you have forgotten me. We met on Melee Island when you were first trying to become a pirate. Hang on a second. Are we gonna do one of those flashback things? They always make me nauseous. No, I'll make this quick. I twice helped you defeat the evil pirate LeChuck, first by preparing a voodoo antiroot, I'm starting to remember. And then again by helping you prepare a voodoo doll of his zombie form. That's right. You've helped so much and I still don't know your name. I am known by many names on many different islands. 
But names have little importance. You should know this more than anyone, Guybrush Threepwood. Yes, you're right. Hey, are you making fun of me? I wouldn't dream of it. Boy, have I got some stories to tell you. Stories? Yes, well, I'm sensing a great disturbance. I have to go. But I've got to tell you about LeChuck and Elaine. I'm going to disappear now in a big flash of light. Cover your eyes. No, 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 wait. It started back on Dinky Island. Now, I knew LeChuck was close. I'll be disappearing here any moment. Okay, okay, no stories. Nice place. I love what you've done with it. Thank you. You'll have to excuse the mess. The kids came over to play with their paper voodoo dolls. They're adorable children. Would you like to see some pictures? Perhaps later. Yes, there's no time for that now. I sense that something terrible has happened. Hey, you're good. Something terrible has happened. I finally proposed to Elaine. Congratulations. That doesn't sound so ter- And when I placed the engagement ring on her hand, she was placed under a horrible pirate curse and trapped for eternity as a solid gold statue. Oh, that explains it. I was struck with a wave of overwhelming hatred and anger. Yeah, that LeChuck was a pretty mean guy. I was talking about Elaine. No, there's no time to worry about that now. We have to hurry. Do not panic, Guybrush. She will be safe until we can break the curse. You only have to worry about her being stolen. Where did you hide her? Hide her? You didn't hide her? She's a solid gold statue on an island full of pirates. What were you thinking? Go, Guybrush, hurry, before you're too late. Elaine! I've got to get her back. This is so embarrassing. Looks like I'm gonna need some more help. Someone's stolen Elaine! That is unfortunate. It will be difficult to get her back. Do you know who kidnapped her? Not for certain, but I suspect that it's the mangy pirates anchored in Danger Cove. Can you give me something to lift the curse? No, LeChuck's curse is a very powerful one. Fueled by his anger and his intense frustration in dealing with the opposite sex. I have nothing here to lift so powerful a curse, but there is one way. Great, tell me. You have to replace the cursed ring with a pure one of greater or equal value. A good guideline is two months' salary. Where am I going to find a huge, uncursed diamond ring? Legends speak of a whopping big diamond ring on Blood Island. Blood Island? I've never heard of it. You will soon become quite familiar with it. But you must be careful, Guybrush. I have foreseen that your journey will be filled with peril and deception. I have also seen that Blood Island will be the place where you will die. Uh-huh. So, uh, any huge uncursed rings on any other islands? No. The value of the ring on Blood Island comes from its emotional significance. It represents a pure, true love, a power greater than any other. Oh, that's sweet. I... I think I have something in my eye. Do not mock the voodoo priestess. How do I get to Blood Island? You will need three things. A map to Blood Island, for the journey is a long and dangerous one. A seaworthy ship to take you there. And an experienced crew. Map, ship, and crew. Got it. Blood Island, here I come. Thanks for your help. Gotta go. What a relief! Wow, I got a whole pack of gum!
Watch me make this disappear. Nothing up my sleeve? Presto! Hey, it worked! There's something inside. There's a glove in here. Looks like a nice coat. With just a few flakes of unsightly dandruff. I'd hate people to think less of this guy just because of a slight problem with... Hey, this isn't dandruff. Oh! Welcome, patron, to the Barbary Coast, where every haircut is an adventure. Aye, and if you're wanting a haircut, you'll have to wait until I'm finished with Captain Rottingham here. Are you guys pirate barbers? We prefer the term buccaneer hairstylists. Great! Maybe you guys can help me find this huge diamond ring I'm looking for. Diamond ring? Yeah, it's supposedly enormous, and it's on Blood Island. Blood Island? Never heard of it. It's a funny story, really. I need it to lift this curse that's turned my girlfriend into a solid gold statue. Solid gold? Wait a second, did I just share too much? Ahoy there, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate. Of course you are. Okay then, who are you? Edward Van Helgen. Not the... That's right, mine is the name that pirates fear the most. Edward Snugglekigs Van Helg. Dude! How'd you like to join my ever-growing pirate crew? Your crew? Why would I want to be on your crew? It's gonna be a blast. We're going to Blood Island. Sorry, Threepwood. As much as I'd love to be out at sea again, I could never serve a captain who wasn't a gentleman and who wasn't my equal. Gentlemen, that's me all over. Then prove it. If you can defeat me in a gentleman's duel, I'll join your crew. All right, let's get to dueling. No, 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 there are rules. If you want to duel with me, you have to give me sufficient insults. Mm, okay. I don't want to insult you. Why can't we just get along? Whoa, look at the time. Gotta scoot. Now there's a challenge to the field of honor. Choose your weapon. I choose the banjo. I accept. You do?
You're a pretty good boy. Let's see you follow this. He's good. I'll never beat him. shot my banjo. You can't be sure of that. That shot may have come from the grassy knoll. Of all the low-down tricks, I never heard of anything so low. I completely misjudged you. You are a pirate after all. I'd be proud to join your crew. Great. I'll just pack this stuff up and get ready. And give me back my gun. I'll need two more sailors for my crew. Station. You've been struck with the hair demons. What are you talking about? The cursed head vermin. The scourge of every hygienic sailor on the seven seas. That's a lie. Sure as I'm standing here, they're wriggling about your scalp like a pack of wretched sea lions. Good analogy. This calls for drastic action. I'm bringing in old Ironsides. No, no, let's not be too rash. Rash? That's a bad sign. There's no time to lose. I'm going to have to amputate. No! No! You'll ruin my hair! I sure could use a haircut. Have a seat, laddie, and I'll do you up with a fine quaff. Blast that ineffectual paperweight. I'll have to go find another. But what about my haircut? Keep your skirt on, lad. Searched the whole island, and I couldn't have found a single rock for a paperweight. I suppose I'll just have to eyeball your haircut. I just remembered I have another appointment. Oh, I was going to give you a French braid, too. Hey, pal, how's it going? Hey. How did you do that? Oh, it was nothing really. Just sudden pressure applied below the sternum to expel a foreign object from the windpipe. That's amazing. I owe you my life. From now on... Yes? From now on, that will be known as the Threepwood Maneuver. This plaque says something about the flower I just cut. Ipecac, Cephalus ipecacuana, one of the creeping vines common throughout Plunder Island. 
The syrup made from the Ipecac flowers was used by the early settlers of Plunder Island as a purgative. I wonder what this sign means. Snake crossing. What possible harm could a snake? Well, this isn't good. It makes syrup of Ipecac. That seems logical. <laughs> Whew. That sure was a close one. I thought for sure when I got eaten by that snake that I was done for. Thank goodness I'm safe. No? Hey! Hang on, the quicksand is sucking all the cool stuff I found in that snake from my pants. Now there's an odd sensation. Ouch! Well, I got the thorn. I hope that was worth it. Neat, a world-class pea shooter. Perfect. For once today, things are going... Well, darn. Hey. Thank goodness for those unpredictable Caribbean trade winds. Have a reservation? Of course I have a reservation. Then let's see your reservation slip. Very good. You may seat yourself, Mr. Uh, pardon me. Mrs. Brian Stoop. Just the right amount of exotic flavor. It's a good thing, too, because I can't keep them out of the food around here. Yeah. Hey, mister. Mister, you listening? 
Ah! It's one of LeChuck's skeletal horde. Aye! I fixed his little red dinghy, but good. Mm, the undead that walk among us must surely be destroyed, lest their evil like overrun and befoul the world of the living. Aye. And he complained about me chicken. Oh. It says, ask me about Grim Fandango. I don't want people always asking me about Grim Fandango. Would you like this jawbreaker? Thanks to you! I think I loosed me gold tooth. Arr, I knew sweets were being bad for me teeth. But it had a fine crunch and were a fiesta of flavor. From now on, I'll be sticking to fleshier foodstuffs. Something, something chewy. Well, there I go again. This old salt's got a craving for something to squish between me teeth. Would you like some gum? Thanks. Mmm. This is really good steak-flavored gum. It gets you here. And it gets you right here. Why, you little scamp. <laughs> That's quite a funny trick you've played on old Cap and Blonde Beard. This gum feels warm. Mmm, tastes like sirloin. Oh, this made my voice sound funny. The gold tooth is in the gum. Cool. Wait one second. Do you have me gold tooth? Uh, no. Let me see. You don't have it? Darn, I'll have to order a new one. I wonder where that tooth fell. It's the gold tooth.
Whoa, my head is spinning. I gotta lay off the rum. Ahoy there! I'm Guybrush Threepwood, Mighty Pirate. So... So, it's good to meet you, Mr... Bill. Bill? That's your pirate name, Bill? Cutthroat Bill. Oh, I see. Well, that puts a whole new spin on it, doesn't it? Are you ever going back to pirating? Maybe. Someday. If I find the right captain. Perfect! I'll be your captain. Onward to Blood Island and high adventure. Wanna come? You, a captain? Hardly. I'm the mighty pirate who defeated LeChuck. And what do you have to show for it? I've got a ton of cool stories. Treasure? Immense mounds of gold and diamonds? Solid gold scepters of power? Anything? Well, I've got these nickels. Wooden? Uh, yeah. Some treasure hunter you are. You couldn't find gold in a jewelry shop. I bet I could find gold on this very island. How much would you bet? Well, I've got these nickels. Right. Come back when you have some real treasure to show me. It's been a pleasure. Bye. Check this out. Is that real gold? I guess you can find treasure. So, you'll join my crew? Sure. As long as my partners will join, too. I'll need one more sailor for my crew. Ahoy there! I'm Guybrush Threepwood, here to serve all your mighty pirate needs. Pleasure to meet you, Guybrush. I am Haggis McMutton of the Clan McMutton. How would you like to join my crew? You seem like a nice enough sort, Guybrush. But a man cannot serve as my captain unless he earns me respect. And how would a man go about doing that? By besting me in a time-honored test of strength. Australian rules football. No, I'm talking about the traditional Highland display of strength and virility. The caber toss. Sounds great. Let's do it. By the spiraling bouffant to be great Uncle McManus! Never before have I seen such strength! Sure, I'll join your crew. I'll wait at the shop until you're ready to leave. Well, I got my whole crew. A barrel of grog! And a chicken! <laughs> Look at all this stuff, mate! Oh, that must have been some battle. Let's pull up anchor and make for Skull Island. King Andre will pay through the nose for all this loot. Wait a minute. There's something else. It's, uh... It's, uh, it's some kind of footwear. <laughs> hey! Those are nice boots. <laughs> but they're still hot. Ow, 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 ow! The plug is all pasty now. Perfect.
15 men on a dead man's... Huh. Who are you? I'm Guybrush Threepwood, and I'm a mighty pirate. Well, we'll just see how your threats sit with my captain. You captain? Yes, Threepwood. You've come aboard the Sea Cucumber. I am Mr. Fossey, the first mate. And my captain? Why, he's the scourge of the seven seas. The dread pirate legend. Yes, Captain. It's on the table, sir. Let's jump. That's right. Captain Lynch. Yes, Captain. Just an intruder, sir. And I'm dealing with him. He says you're to be tortured. Choose your punishment. You can either be tarred and feathered, or you can walk the plank. Oh, I walked that plank thing on the way up. Good enough? No. Sorry. Well, I suppose we'll have to go with walking the plank. We're trying to avoid using the tar and feathers. It's messy, and we need to save the tar for emergency leak repair. What do you say, men? Shall we make him walk the plank? What's that, Captain? Vandals! Well, it looks like we're having technical difficulties, Threepwood. So we'll have to drag out the tar and feathers after all. So what do I do now? <laughs> hmm. I don't know. We've never done this before. Aren't you humiliated? I guess so, but no more than usual. Well, and just get lost then. The giant demon chicken of Puerto Pollo! You weren't content just to release all my chickens and scare all my customers away, were you? Uh, that's right. Well, you're not taking me without a fight! <laughs> Ugh, this chicken grease washed off all the feathers. Uh, whoops, I better keep quiet. Absolutely, Captain. I'll get right on it after I have my dinner. What's that, Captain? I eat too much fried chicken. Well, I... I've just got a weakness for chicken, that's all. I know you don't have any weaknesses, Captain LeChimp. You're an overachiever, a <laughs> doer. I'm just a tiny little fly. LeChimp? The captain is an ape? Well, if the captain is an ape, then Mr. Fossey must be... Aye, aye, Captain! Fresh bananas for the whole crew! An utter loon. What's that, Captain? Your parasites are bothering you. Well, of course I'll groom you, sir. You know, sir, finding this gold statue may be just the boost our crew needs. Why, with the riches we get from this, we can get new and better ships and become the terror of the Caribbean! It's a book about ventriloquism. <clears throat> Mr. Fossey, I've been thinking. Are you all right, Captain? You sound different. Don't interrupt. Sorry, sir. Maybe it's time we gave up pirating. 
I mean, take a look around at me, at the rest of the crew. We're all monkeys. You mean in the Darwinian sense, sir? No, I mean in the quite literal sense. Uh, have you noticed that the crew is happier swinging from the masts than swabbing the decks? I don't even want to mention what they've been flinging around the ship. Are you suggesting that I'm not disciplining the crew enough? No, no, I'm suggesting that we all give up this charade and go back to the trees. That's the life for a monkey, not sailing the seas for months on end. Well, if you feel so strongly about it, sir, I suppose I can't argue. I think our last order of business should be to dig up that statue and... It'll be tough on the men, sir, but I'll tell them that you think it best. Okay, but first we should dig up that statue and give it to... I'll make sure they understand that it's not their fault. Very good, and then we can dig up that statue and... Okay, never mind then. That must be the map to where they've buried Elaine. It smells like something's burning. Must be this shoddy 17th century electrical wiring. Wait a second. Somebody's been monkeying around with these controls. must be where Elaine is buried. And now, the moment I know you've all been waiting for. How about some amazing juggling? Uh-oh, it looks like he's coming for the cannonballs now. And now, the ultimate Shakespearean delight. The famous cannonball juggling scene from Romeo and Juliet. Whoa! Whoops! <laughs> I'm glad it had a happy ending and he got the, um, got the girl in the end. Elaine should be safe up in the crow's nest, for now. Nice boots, huh? Sorry. Hey, what do you know? I really am big bone. Uh-oh, quiet! Here comes Captain LeChuck! <laughs> Sail from my stronghold on Monkey Island. I'll unleash 
my entire army of the undead. This time, Elaine will be mine. Ah, Elaine. It will be a sweet day in hell when you feel the fiery breath of my gifts on your lips and become my undead bride. And I'll destroy any man who dares get in my way. Suffering sailors, it is good to be dead! <laughs> Yes, may I help you? My name is Guybrush Threepwood, and I'm a mighty pirate. Threepwood? You must be Seersucker Skip Rackham's cousin. How are Muffy and the twins? Uh, who? Hey, it's a lovely afternoon for the beach today. Not too crowded yet. There's a crafts workshop on the south beach, and a swapper size class at two and four. Water's warm and the waves aren't too high. Just watch out for the occasional undead corpse washing up on shore. Might want to keep the kids away from any rotting flesh. But otherwise, the siege early today shouldn't spoil your afternoon. Just between you and me, the undead are notoriously bad tippers. So it's just as well they didn't take over the island, eh? <laughs> Let me see your membership card and we'll fix you right up. Why? You're at the Brimstone Beach Country Club in Smorgy. Part of the Leisure Lovers Plan community for retired pirates. It's very exclusive. I'm afraid if you don't have a membership card, you cannot use any of the club's amenities. I don't want an amenity. I had to eat one of those while I was lost at sea and it was terrible. Then let me also point out that without that membership card, you are not permitted on the beach, you cannot use any of our towels, and you can't have anything from the grill. Good day. Excuse me. Yes, you filthy little man. My card. Let me see that. Oh no! In the name of all things clean, you've got a membership! Yes. And I think I'll just take one of your fluffy clean towels and enjoy a nice relaxing stroll down your beach. No! You mustn't! I must. And perhaps I'll sunbathe nude. Sweet mother of pearl, no! Now that I think about it, it is nice out on the far end of the beach. You should go there. You should go there now. Nice fluffy towel. This towel is soaking wet. Youch! Nice fluffy towel. I'll just take one more. The towels are all wet now.
i... Auć! I'm Guybrush Threepwood. Very nice to meet you, Mr. Threewood. I am Palido. Palido Domingo. I am so glad you're here. Finally. Someone on this island with some manners. And my drink needs refreshing. Take it away and bring me another. Uh, I don't think you understand. I'm a mighty pirate. I'm sorry, babe. I really sincerely am. Perhaps I didn't use the magic word. Take this drink away and bring me another. Now! Wow, you're pale. Look, babe, I haven't been sunbathing for very long, so cut me some slack. How long have you been out here? Since August. I've seen correctional fluids with a better color than you. Yeah, babe, I'm not the tannest cat around, but as you can see, I'm working on it. Would you like to join my crew? Oh, no, babe, I'm not a sailor. I make my living off the hard work and talent of others. You're a project leader on a computer game? No, no. I'm a high-powered talent agent. Major stars. We're talking major stars here. I'm looking for Blood Island. Do you know where it is? Nope. Never heard of it. See you around. Three-headed monkey! Oh boy, oh boy! Gee willikers, is this gonna be swell? Hey! Just because you're a grown-up doesn't mean you can waste my time. Hey, there's no bottom to this mug. Hello there, Sonny. You open yet? Oh boy, oh boy! My first customer. Gee willikers, is this gonna be swell? Hi, my name's Kenny. Kenny Foulmouth. It sure would be neat if you would buy some of my lemonade. It only costs a nickel. And best of all, I have a bottomless mug policy. That does sound like a good deal. I'd like to buy some lemonade. Sure. We have a bottomless mug policy, you know. That'll be a nickel. That was as refreshing as morning dew. Hey! How did you drink all the lemonade? You switched mugs on me, you cheap. I hope you're happy. You put a budding young entrepreneur out of business. It's full of dye now. I've brought you a new mug. Thanks. Here's your drink, sir. Look, 
Gelido, you're burning. Ah, all those months in the sun and my tan is just going to peel away. I better turn over. Good idea. I really wish I didn't have to do that. Well, I've got a crew, a map, a ship, and finally got Elaine back. So let's say we head on to Blood Island to lift the curse and save Elaine. How about it, guys? Let's get moving towards Blood Island. Let's head on out and find our fortune, guys. This might be more difficult than I first imagined. Ah, the sea. I, the sea. Makes you glad to be alive. I think that ship is following us. Feel that salty spray. The sunlight sparkling off the bay. What a glorious seafaring day. It's a pirate ship. We got the outrunner. All right, men. Are you with me? Hey. Look, guys. A whale. Where? Where? That ship is gaining on us. Cutthroat Bill. Rig the topsail. Is that a right whale? No, no, lad. They're boarding us. Crew, help me out here. It is a member of the Cetus suborder, Mr. Shetty, though. I think you're right. Well, well. Rottingham, so it's you. What do you want, other than a good toupee? I've come for your map to the fabled blood alarm. Then I'll find the diamond you mentioned. It will make a fun paperweight for my escritoire. Ooh, look! It's breaching! Ooh! Ah! Look, Baldy, I'll never give you that map. I need it to save Elaine. Then I'll have to take it from you by force. That whale must be 30.5 meters. 100 feet. And weigh 200 metric tons. You know, of course. In a swan fight, a sharp weed is much more important than a sharp blade. Of course. Everybody knows that, Chrome Dome. Let's get this over with. Every enemy I've met, I've annihilated. Oh, yeah? Well, you fight like a cow. No, 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 no. That's not right at all. What? On the sea, we fight it a little differently. On the sea, all your insults and threats have to rhyme. What? So when I say every enemy I've met, I've annihilated, you say... I once found some gold, but it was just electroplated? No. You say, it's your breath. I'm sure they are suffocated. Let's try that again, shall we? You're as repulsive as a monkey in a negligee. Uh... I'm waiting. I... Uh, I... Just as I thought. You're an amateur with this world. Give me that map. Here, take it. That's your map? Yeah. As soon as I throw piloting these waters, it's off to blood alone. Until we meet again, Monsieur Tweepood. Got to get that map back or we'll never find Blood Island. Thanks, guys. You were a world of help back there. It was a rousing battle, Captain. Aye, and it reminds me of a song. We're a band of vicious pirates are sailing out to sea. When you hear a gentle singing, you'll be sure to turn and flee. Oh, this is just ridiculous. Come on, men. We've got to recover that map. That pirate will be done for when he falls into our trap. We're a club of tune for rovers. We can sing in every clef. We can even hit the high notes. It's just too bad we're tuned deaf. A pirate I was meant to be. Trim the sails and roam the sea. Let 
Let's go defeat that evil pirate. We know he's sure to lose, because we know just where to fire it. We're thieving balladeers. A gang of cutthroat mugs. To fight us off, you only guns. Just jolly good ear plugs. A pirate I was meant to be. Trim the sails and roam the sea. All right, crew. Let's get to work. Our vocation's a thing we love, a thing we'd never shirk. We'll fight you in the harbor, we'll battle you on land. Oh, when you meet singing pirates, there'll be more than you can stand. Oh, that was a good one. No, it wasn't. No time for song, we've got to move. The battle will be long, but our courage we will prove. We're a pack of scurvy sea dogs. Have we pity not a dram? We only roasted garlic. Then sing from the diaphragm. A pirate I was meant to be. Trim the sails and roam the sea. We'll surely avoid scurvy if we all eat an orange. And, um... Well, uh... Door hinge? No, no. Guess the song's over then. Guess so. Okay. Back to work. Well, gee, I feel a little guilty now. Captain. Yes, Mr. McMudden. We were wondering, we were, just what kind of captain you are. What do you mean, Haggis? Well, some captains are men of action. They like to have complete responsibility and control for their ship. Other captains prefer to concentrate more on the thinking aspects of captaining. The captain who's a man of action will undoubtedly have a much more difficult time of defeating other scoundrels of the sea in the fast-paced realm of ship-to-ship -ship combat. The more academic captain will find the other pirate vessels he meets to be less aggressive and therefore far easier and quicker to defeat in combat. I see. So, Captain Threepwood, which type of captain be ye? I think I'd rather let you guys help me out. Easy ship combat it is. ship can be hazardous to your life. Give me your treasure and I'll let you live. You won't live to regret this. Every enemy I've met, I've annihilated. I am rubber, you are glue. You're as repulsive as a monkey in a negligee. I am rubber, you are glue. Killing you would be justifiable homicide. Oh, yeah? You win! Give me your treasure, you bath-sized sea sponge. Take it. It was cluttering up me hold anyway. We're loaded with booty. Well, well, well. I guess you've learned an important lesson about cheating. I sure have, mister. Golly, I'll never cheat on anyone ever again. Honest, I've got a new business now, and gosh, it's swell. What is it? I'm running guns. Tell me you're lying. I never lie anymore, mister. You've shown me the light. Can I interest you in some shrapnelizing ammunition designed to bring exquisite pain and unreasonable suffering to all your enemies? What do you have for sale today? Today, customer name here, uh, what's your name again? Guybrush Threepwood. Today, Mr. Cheaphood, I can offer you the complete line from Bob's Big Four Bloomer Brand Cannon Incorporated. To start with, we have the entry-level model, the Buccaneer's Buddy. We also have the following Canon models available. The Ouchmaster, the Hole Maker Deluxe, the Pain Giver 2000, Mr. Massacre, and finally, the Canon used by that most fearsome scoundrel, Rene Rottingham himself, the Destructomatic T-47. So. 
Can I interest you in any of these models, mister? I'll take the Destructomatic T-47. Whoa, mister. You've entered a select group of pirates. You've just ordered the Destructomatic T-47 armor-piercing carnage delivery system with auto-loading and fax motor. Quite a fine piece of hardware, if I do say so myself. Now, will that be doubloons, jewels, captured maidens? My ship's hull's full of booty. Well, the amount in your treasure hold is not enough for this model. Would you take my old cannons as a trade-in? Well, I don't know. They are pretty banged up. Hang on while I check the blue book on them. Okay. I'll have my mom install your new cannon prano. While she's at it, I'll also have her pick up the appropriate amount from your hold. And pick up your trade-in. Mom! It's you again. Give me my map, you fiend. I shall dispatch you presently. I have never lost a melee. Well, you would have, but you were always running away. Your lips look like they belong on the catch of the day. When I'm done with you, you'll be a boneless fillet. I give you a choice. You can be gutted or decapitated. With you around, I'd prefer to be fumigated. My attacks have left entire islands depopulated. With your breath, I'm sure they all suffocated. I can't tell which of my traits has you the most intimidated. Your odor alone makes me aggravated, agitated, and infuriated. Sacre bleu! I cannot believe it! I have been defeated in battle! So give me that map, take your ship and skedaddle! You win, you win, you'll get your map back! You were doomed from the start, you kleptomaniac! Alright, alright, I give up already! It's no wonder you lost with a sword so unsteady! Merci! I beg you! No more insults, please! Your smell and face remind me of moldy old cheese. Ah! We got the map back! Now we can sail to Blood Island! out for a second. Where's Elaine? She flew a wee bit into the woods when we crashed. Then let's get going. We'll find her, then scour the island for the uncursed diamond ring that'll transform her back to normal. I don't be thinking we will, lad. What do you mean? I, I mean, what do you mean, Haggis? This be a mutiny, Captain. We're leaving you. Did I mention that I'm offering my crew a very attractive pension plan? Ah, uh, you did. And the stock options. But we're still leaving. But why, Haggis? Why? Well, I admit being your pirate crew's been a real pleasure. A real pleasure. But we've grown restless. 
We can hear the voice of the siren calling to us, and she says she'd be wanting us to do her hair. You're going back to being barbers? Aye. We'll be sailing back to Plunder Island just as soon as we can fix the ship. Good luck, Captain Driftwood. It was a pleasure to be looting with you. I guess I'm on my own again. Uh, Haggis? Aye. My, that's a big bottle of lotion you have there. That's right, she be. And don't you be getting any ideas about stealing it. We are sure to be needing it, you see. Carpentry on this tropical climate can and will prematurely age your skin. Tis but one of the many hardships a pirate must face daily during this barbarous age. Aye. And if we pirates didn't carry hand lotion aboard all our ships, we'd probably die from the chafing. <laughs> wow, if I were doing a history report on pirates and I included that fact, I'd get an A+. We're talking guaranteed A+. And that A+, just might get you into the college of your choice. Think about it. There's no way that I can have even a drop of lotion? Well, maybe we could make a deal. You see, we need to be repairing the ship. She's leaky as a colander. And for some unknown reason, the ship's supplies of tar have been depleted. How the previous crew could set sail without any tar aboard eludes me. But the fact is, unless we get us some tar or something like it, we're doomed to this island for good. Aye, hey, I'd give you the whole bloomin' bottle of lotion if you could find me something to patch the ship so we can be on our way home. I'll let you get back to work. Hi, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, and I'm a... Stop yelling! I wasn't yelling, I was just... Oh, I've got a terrible hangover. Find something to clear my head, and I can talk to you. And keep it down. Okay, fella, this won't hurt a bit. Hey, I guess it didn't hurt a bit. You must be shedding.
This is some of the hair of the dog that bit me. Shh. Thanks. I found this egg for your hangover remedy. Shh. Thanks. Here's a wild pepper for your hangover remedy. Shh. Thanks. That's all the ingredients I need. Let me quietly mix up a dose. Ah, much better. Here, you can take the rest. I'd like a drink, please. Sure. What will you have? Give me a big fruity drink with an umbrella in it. Good choice. It's a delicious taste of the islands. Made with lemon, grapefruit, and ground beef. Hey, don't I get one of those decorative umbrellas to go on my tropical drink? Um, I don't think we have any. No, I'm wrong. I do have this one. That jar's for my tips. Put it back. But I was going to put a whole lot of money in it. Too much for me to carry around with me. So I'm going to have to take it with me and fill it up. Oh, okay then. That opened it. That makes the drink oh so much more appealing. It just occurred to me that mixing medicine and alcohol is a really stupid and possibly lethal thing to do. If I were a real person instead of a lovably inept cartoon character with the potential for a few more sequels, I wouldn't even consider it. Skull! That's odd. It's supposed to cause drowsiness. I don't feel the least bit drowsy. In fact, I, uh... In fact, I feel, uh... <laughs> So then the Undertaker says, I wanted to be a pallbearer, but I couldn't stop coughing. Oh, 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 you crack me up, Mort. So what's with the new guy? Oh, he's been like that for an hour now. Passed out cold. He'll come around. I don't know. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Hmm. I guess that's the end of the game, then. What with him being the main character and all? Funny. I didn't think you could die in LucasArts Adventure Games. Well, maybe they're trying something different. When I should take care of him? Would you? It's bad for business, having him just lie there. Rest in peace and all that. Yikes. Where's that telltale pounding coming from? It's coming from within one of these coffins. From the dead. The dead that surround me. They must know my horrible secret. They'll never let me rest until I've paid for the wrongs I've committed against. Wait a second. I don't have a horrible secret. I'm glad to be finally out of that thing, even though it was a spacious, comfortable model with plenty of leg and headroom. Well, hello there! Say, you look familiar. Uh, yes, well... Uh... Of course! Guybrush Threepwood! You're the one who locked me in there in the first place. Well, you see, I've been meaning to... No, no, I won't hear of it. 
That was the best time of my life. Gave me plenty of time to think, you know? To think about the things that really matter. I don't know if you've considered this, son, but live burials are not an altogether uncommon experience here in the Caribbean. I wasn't aware of that. Not to mention pirate raids and deadly sea battles, huge man-eating reptiles, dangerous quicksand pits, trigger-happy duelists, and of course, those pesky undead. Have you ever thought of what would happen to your loved ones should this gruesome fate befall you? No, but... but... Well, of course, you have plenty of time to think about it. Or do you? I'm one of the lucky ones. I've been dead. It's given me a whole new perspective on life. A life that I'm going to devote to making sure people's life insurance needs are met. Here, take one of my business cards I've had made up. If you've been locked in that coffin, how are you able to have business cards made? Now's not the time to worry about the technicalities, son. Now's the time to ask yourself, are you covered? Run along now and let me set up my office. Mm -hmm. We're trapped in here. The door's locked. Nonsense! This is one of Stan's cozy crypts, all equipped with a patented secure lock release mechanism. Just jiggle the handle there. Hi guys, I guess you'll be wondering how I came to be back from the dead. No questions for the dead guy come back to life? No questions like, is there life after death or is there a heaven? Will there be adequate parking? Fine, be that way. I wouldn't tell you about the hereafter if you begged me. This village is deserted. How curious. You look familiar somehow. Perhaps it's because I look like a big lemon. Oh yeah, but it's more than that. We've met before, back on Monkey Island. Ah, uh, Monkey Island. We had a nice village there. Rent-controlled huts close to the good schools. Those were the salad days, so to speak. Till they put in that darn carnival. Carnival? Yes, carnival. Just as soon as they put up the first tent, whoosh! The whole place becomes trendy. Sailors coming in at all times of the night. That awful music droning on and on. And to be honest with you, I think the Midway games are rigged. Yeah, yeah. At night, it wasn't safe for a cannibal to walk the island alone. Look out! The volcano is erupting! Run for your lives! You're not fooling anyone, pirate boy. That volcano isn't going to erupt. Mount Acidopolis is completely harmless. We have curried favor with Sherman, the all-powerful god of the volcano. The god of the volcano likes spicy foods? Shut up, or I'll eat you. Okay. 
When we first landed on this island, the volcano god was most upset. Belching out smoke, vomiting up lava. It was disgusting, really. And potentially hazardous. We knew we had to do something to pacify the volcano god, and we assumed a good sacrifice would do the trick. A reasonable assumption. But when we threw the sacrifice into the volcano, Mount Acidophilus erupted violently. We thought Sherman was upset at us, so we started making sacrifices every day. We tried everything. Fish, poultry, livestock, phenylalanine. The usual. Then one day, we tried Bree. There was a huge eruption that nearly killed us all. What happened? Sherman is lactose intolerant. Ah, uh, it all makes sense now. Now, Sherman is on a very strict diet. He only gets fresh fruit, vegetables, and of course, soy products for the protein so important to muscle building. I'll, uh, see you around. That looks like a mask. I'll just walk over here so he won't see me put this on. Ick. <clears throat> Finally, you're here. Come on, we're late for the sacrifice. God of the volcano who resides in Mount Acidopolis! Accept this sacrifice we make unto you. In the form of flesh with high amounts of fiber and wholesome cellulose. Free of all fat and trans fatty acids. So that it might nourish you and bring your favor upon our humble village. And not upset nor agitate your ulcerative caldera. Okay, boys, toss him in. You've been a wonderful audience, thank you, and good night. You fool! You've given cheese to a lactose intolerant volcano god. Do you know what that means? You brought about the coming of the divine dysentery. Run for your lives! Wow, that was more spectacular than I'd hoped. I guess I'll just drag this down to Haggis now. Here, Haggis. This stuff should work to patch up the ship. Aye, laddie, indeed it should. The consistency of tar, but with a tangy pepper taste. So, can I have your lotion now? Aye, lad. Go ahead and take it. I feel a dark presence coming over me. Hi there. Ah! Hi, I'm Guybrush. And you would be? I am Madame Zima, mistress of the ancient arts of precognition and augury, diva of divination. Cool, you're a fortune teller. 
Ah, that and so much more. Whatever. Tell me my fortune. I do not think you wish to hear. There are things of which a man is better off being ignorant. Oh, but I'm already ignorant of so many things. I want to know my future. No, you are not meant to know. I bet you just can't do it. That's the problem. You can't do it, and you're afraid everyone will find out you're just a phony. You know, I could put a curse on you that would make every morsel of food you eat become a ravenous cockroach inside your intestines, giving you the most excruciating death imaginable. So, are you gonna tell me my fortune or not? I'm not kidding! Okay, okay. What's in the cards for me? Fame? Fortune? Romance? Ah, very well. We will consult the cards. The process of reading the tarot is a very complex one. Each draw of the cards foretells an upcoming event in your life. When assembled, they will tell the story of your future. A future filled with twists and... Ah! What is it? Is that a good... Ah! It is death. Well, in the tarot, death just means change, right? I mean, it's nothing to get worried about, right? I uh, sure, whatever you say. Now, please go! There must be some mistake. Read my tarot cards again. There is no mistaking your fate, Guybrush. The cards do not lie. But if you insist, once again, it is death. I'm feeling luckier. Give me another tarot reading. Luck is not involved here, Guybrush. It is your destiny. Whatever. Let's see what the cards say this time. The card says... Death. Are you sure you're not dealing from the bottom of the deck? Remember that curse I told you about? Okay, okay. Hit me. Death. How many of those cards do you have, anyway? How about giving me one more tarot reading? This is evil work, Guybrush. The fates have conspired against you. And no man can interfere. Your path has been determined. Okay, I get your point. I really do. Just one more time for Guybrush. <gasps> Let me guess. Death? Leave this place! Huh? You are putting us all in grave danger! Your very presence will bring us nothing but sickness, tragedy, and death! Oh yeah? Well... Demon! Demon! Look! A three-headed monkey! Ah! Then the prophecies were true! Where? I don't see anything. He must have run away. This is a very bad omen. I'd better get rid of this incriminating picture frame. What? Oh. 
Ah, oh, there's nothing like family. No matter what may happen in the topsy-turvy world of the Caribbean resort business, I can always relax in the knowledge that I come from good, wealthy stock. Breeding. That's what's important. Breeding and culture. Just like Grandfather Lambert. Breeding, culture, and lots and lots of really old money. Mm, it makes a man proud. It's funny. I don't remember Grandfather Lambert as looking so... so common. Oh, weird. It's like his eyes follow me. Pictures like that really creep me out. I guess I'm better at this pirating thing than I thought. It worked! I'm not sure if that's strong enough to hold it. I might need one more nail. There. The bed has been nailed down. I don't believe we've met. Who are you? I am Griswold, last of the good soups and proprietor of this hotel. You may have heard of us and our soup restaurant resort empire that stretches across the Caribbean. Well... Uh, this was once our proudest resort, uh, but it lost all its popularity after the regular eruptions of Mount Acidophilus stopped. The volcano has erupted! Yes, I know! The Good Soup Empire is saved! Well, I'm happy for you. Soon the resort will be flooded with tourists coming to see the volcano, and I can finally put on the show I was working on the last time we had guests. What show is that? Voulez-vous Vichyssoise? A dramatic musical about a talented young Parisian soup chef who is cruelly taken down by the Paris culinary establishment for her revolutionary ideas about soup preparation. I'm sure it'll be a big hit. What do you know about the Lost Ring of Blood Island? Oh, that's a very sad chapter in my family's history. My great-aunt Minnie Stroney Goodsoup was a well-to-do member of Blood Island society. Her one weakness was her romantic nature. She had a thing for pirates. One in particular. He came into port, she fell instantly in love, and they were engaged within the week. Then, on the eve of their wedding, he stole the fantastic Good Soup diamond from her ring and sold it to smugglers on Skull Island. She wore the empty engagement band on her finger until the day she died, which was not long after. Some say she still haunts the Good Soup family tomb. It is a sad story, is it not? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Uh, could you repeat that? Get lost, Chowderhead. I thought if I died, I'd be buried with your aunt. Well, isn't it obvious? You can't be buried in the Good Soup family crypt unless you're a member of the Good Soup family. A member of the family, huh? Uncle Griswold, it's me! Don't you recognize me? Recognize you? I've never seen you before in my life. What is your name? Hearty Beef and Potato. Hearty Beef and Potato? I come from good Irish stock. Hmm. 
I don't recall having any relatives with that name. Look at me. Don't I look just like a good soup? Now that you mention it, you do bear a slight resemblance to my great-grandfather C. Lambert Good Soup. Clammy? Why, folks back home used to tell me all the time. You're the spitting image of old Chowder Good Soup. You know, I think you're right. Ah, uh, I wonder why I didn't see it before. I could just talk about Good Soup history all day. How about that first fateful journey made to the Caribbean? Oh, you mean the one that... Baron Salmon Bisque de Good Soup began in 1621? Exactly. He landed on Scab Island with just a spoon and a dream. In just four short years, he had formed the largest chain of all soup restaurants in the Western Hemisphere. By 1635, he had driven the entire Van Salad family out of the Caribbean and had a restaurant empire that spanned the globe. Actually, the Van Salads were not driven out until 1637, and the Good Soup chain of restaurants and resorts never did become popular in the South Pacific. Yes, we are. All right. Whatever. Well, son, it looks like you were right. Welcome back to the glorious name of Good Soup. I'm, uh, honored. And as a Good Soup, you're welcome to every benefit the name provides. Instant prestige around Blood Island, a 10% discount to any of the good soup resorts in the Caribbean, and, of course, medical, dental, and a 401k. And the best thing of all, if you should happen to drop dead, you will be buried in the extravagant good soup family crypt. It's as if all my dreams have come true. I'd like a drink, please. Right. Oh dear. He's had a sudden and completely unexpected relapse of death. Oh, and just as we were getting reacquainted. As his kinsman, it is my duty to give him a proper burial. It is my solemn vow. Young, hearty beef and potato shall be buried in the Good Soup family crypt. All right. Yikes. <laughs> Die! Oh, I'm not going to do that again. I think I broke my skull. I'm all skull. It's your own fault. Stop scaring me like that. So I did scare you? Really? Well, startled is more like it. Oh. B but startled in a terrified kind of way. You really are very, very scary. Don't talk down to me. I really don't have any choice. I saw you get out of that crypt. Does this mean that you're dead? No, I was only faking. Darn. I thought together we could walk among the living and spawn a new wave of terror throughout the Caribbean. So what you're saying is that you only love me for my legs. Something like that. I've got it. Hey, what happened to the light? Murray, do your stuff. Okay. Wretched tomb. 
I must be set free, or I will haunt you forever. I will hide your keys beneath the cushions of your upholstered furniture. And never more will you be able to find socks that match. All right, hang on. I'm coming. Great work, Murray. I... I was terrifying, wasn't I? My demonic powers have made me omnipotent! <laughs> Uh-oh. Looks like the lantern ran out of oil. There. It's open. Now shuffle off and give me peace. Well, Murray, are you ready to continue our heady adventuring? Murray? Where'd he go? Hey, what an amazing story I have to tell. I was dead, but I live again. Who wants to hear about it? Eh, you guys don't deserve to hear a good story. You just stole that mirror, didn't you? No, I didn't. It's right there, look. Hmm. I guess you're right. Oh dear, I'm starting to look old. From all that drinking. Mind your own business. Welcome back to Mutual of Stab. Is that real gold? The finest known to man. Not much spit on it either anymore. Now you're starting to speak my language. All right, let's find a coverage plan that suits your needs. And you can rest assured that you provided for your family well after your unfortunate departure. What are the terms of this plan exactly? It's quite simple, son. When you die, whoever holds that policy gets a lot of money. A lot of money? Wow! Wow is right! Now I want you to be careful out there. Okay, I will. Thanks. No, I'm serious. I want you to be very, very careful. Will do. I'm cashing in this insurance policy. Give me a lot of money. But this is a life insurance policy. You collect when the policyholder dies. No, honest. I was dead for a really long time. And you just got better? Well, yes. Do you have any proof of this miracle? As a matter of fact, smart guy, I've got your proof right here. A death certificate. Well, this must be some kind of mistake. Uh-uh, it's right there in high-res black and white. I died. Give me a lot of money. Hmm. It looks like I'm left with no choice but to acquiesce. No, just give me my money. 
That's what I mean. Oh, thanks. It's full of sugar water now. like she's all right. Hang on, honey. I'm going to get you out of this mess. It's full of yummy, delicious sugar water. Mmm, bet that water sure tastes good. There, I poked holes in it. They're trapped inside and glowing like mad. Boy, it's windy up here. Perfect! The lighthouse is working now. the ferryman between here and Skull Island. Trapped for so very long in the icy ocean mists. Oh, how I hate that blasted mist. Really? I like mist. I think it's pretty. Well, sure, mist is pretty. But egad, is it dull. I'd like a ride out to Skull Island, please. I will risk these rough waters no more. For too long have I rocked in that watery cradle of death. Freaky imagery. Whatever. Anyway, I'm not going out there again until I'm sure I can make it there safely. I need a compass. How will being able to draw perfect circles get you out to Skull Island? Not that kind of compass. The directional kind. If you find me one, I'll take you to Skull Island. It's full of seawater. Okay. Cool, a cork with a magnetic pin stuck in it. The mind boggles at the possibilities. Hey, neat, it points north. Science is fun when you know the secret. Here, take this compass. This is a compass. Will it work? Of course. See how it points north? Wow, that's incredible. How'd you do that? 
Eh, it was nothing. I'd like a ride out to Skull Island, please. All right, let's go. Even the bravest of men must dread the horror of this place. Steal your courage, boy, now, before you gaze upon the terrible, horrible face of... Skull Island! That's a duck! What are you talking about? Don't you see the skull? This island doesn't look like a skull at all. It looks like a great, big, enormous duck. It should be called Duck Island. Well, you see, you, you gotta squint and sort of turn your head and... Ooh, it's just so scary. If you squint and turn your head, it looks like a bunny. Well, anyway, see that light up there on the cliff face? That's Smuggler's Cave. It's run by King Andre, the greatest smuggler in the world. And his nefarious assistant, Cruff. But how do I get up there? You'll have to go to the top of the cliff. Won't you be coming with me? No, you must go alone. There will be someone there who will help you. But I warn you, beware of King Andre. He is as ruthless as he is bald. Good luck. Thanks. Hello. Can you tell me how to find the evil smugglers of Skull Island? Beats me. Oh, wait a second. Uh, I, I think I remember something about that at the orientation seminar. Let me think. The cave is halfway down this sheer cliff face. Climb on board this dumbwaiter. I'll, I'll lower you down. It looks pretty rickety. Are you sure it's safe? No. Never used it before, but I, I'm sure it can't be that dangerous. I'm a temp here. The, the usual elevator operator, uh, Ronbeard, uh, he's sick, so I'm filling in. Uh, I guess that'll be okay. What's your name? It's LaFoot. Would you lower me down to the smuggler's cave? Sure, sure, I can do that. You, you must weigh no more than, say, 20 pounds, right? Actually, more like 120. Oh. Well, it can't hurt to try, right? No, you're sure about this. Oh, yeah. You don't look that heavy at all. Hmm. Is that not tied securely? Here we go. Okay, give me a little bit more slack. Oops! Okay, that's too much slack. Ah! I have got so much money, it's almost embarrassing. Well, hello. Let's talk Mr. Uh... Threeport. Guybrush Threeport. Very well, Mr. Threeport. I am King Andre, and this is my associate, Gruff. Were you looking for something in particular? The Good Soup Family Diamond. LeChuck stole it, you bought it, I want it. Now. <sighs> Please? Sir? But we have so much quality merchandise here at the Pirates Club. Our prices get lower every day. Everything a pirate, or pirate in trading, could possibly want is here. For the right price. <laughs> I don't get it. The Good Soup Diamond is the centerpiece of my collection. The fantastic energy flowing through it is the key to all my power. So, can I have it? Of course you can't have it, unless you were to give me something in return. Maybe we could make a deal. As you wish. You are a formidable opponent, Mr. Threepwood, but it looks as if our game of cat and mouse must cease. It is a perfect diamond, one of the largest I've ever seen. I'll take it. And so it comes with a very large price. Eh, enough with the hard sell. How much? It will cost you an awful lot of money. Do you have that much? Well, I have a lot of money. <laughs> Not enough. My partner is right. We can't give it to you for anything less than an awful lot of money. But perhaps we can make a deal. My partner and I are very fond of cards. Uh, poker in particular. 
How about a little wager? If you can defeat us at poker, you win the diamond. Sounds fair. Yes, fair. <laughs> Could you stop laughing like that? It's very unnerving. So, Mr. Threepwood, the question is to you. Care to join us in a game of cards? Sounds fun. Deal me in, Baldy. You will have to pay to enter the game. Well, how much do I need? Not very much. Sure, I can handle that. This is a lot of money. I better only give them part of it. Have you ever played poker before, Mr. Threepwood? No. Would you believe this is my very first time? <laughs> then I'll give you a brief explanation. The game is the simplest variety of five-card start. I deal five cards to each of us. We show our cards to each other, and the player with the best hand wins. Well, how do I know what makes the best hand? If you have any questions, just ask us. You do trust us, don't you? Of course I trust you. Very well. Let us begin. Good cards. Daddy needs to lift a pirate curse. Take a moment to look at your cards. Five of a kind. Right there. Not even you guys can beat five of a kind. Uh, you're correct, Mr. Threepwood. We cannot beat five of a kind. The question remains, however, whether or not you can beat a pair. A pair? A pair of murderous smugglers. Huh? Us, Mr. Threepwood. I'm talking about us. We're gonna kill you. Oh, I get it. <laughs> whether or not you can beat a pair, that's pretty clever. Now, now, gentlemen. Let's not be too hasty. There's a delivery man out here with a package. You idiots! You blew out the lights! I got the diamond. Not for long, you little... Birch! Hit him, not me, you cretin! Who are you calling up? There he goes! Get him! Got what I needed from the smugglers. Good. Let us leave this place of evil. Good luck on the rest of your adventures, Guybrush. What? You can't mean... I'm afraid so. This work is too dangerous for me. I'm going to find a more stable, secure line of work. I hear there's still an opening for a chef on Scab Island. Well, you'll be sorely missed. I know, but my destiny lies out there, somewhere. Beyond the rolling waves. Farewell, good friend Welshman. Oh, wait. Where'd you say Scab Island was again? East by Northeast. You can't miss it. Oh, thanks a bunch. Ah, whoops. I forgot to tell him that a magnetized pin will only have compass-like properties for a short time. Plunder Island, Captain LeChuck. <laughs> then scour the seas, you ossified rats! Hunt them down, then bring them to me. Find me, Guy Brush Threepwood. It's with him that you'll find Elaine. Burn down every island in the Caribbean if you have to. But bring me my bride! And more slaw! Curse those villains! They never give you enough slaw with these value meals.
I didn't hear you come in. I was just... Charles? Charles de Goulash? Is it really you? Minnie! It's been so long. Oh, Charles, it has. It has. You look so different. Really? Why, you look exactly the same. Oh, Charles, how you flatter me. Oh, but you must go now. But why? Now that I've found you again after all these years. What would our families say if they knew we were alone together on such a romantic night? Minnie, this may sound rash, but I... I love you, Minnie Good Soup. Oh, Charles, you mustn't. Oh, I can't help it. I've always loved you. Do you hear? I've always loved you, Minnie, and I always will. Come away with me now. Hello? Oh, but Charles, it just isn't done. Think of the scandal it would cause. To heck with the scandal, Minnie. Oh. Marry me. Oh, yes, Charles. Yes. A thousand times, yes. Then kiss me, my love. This slippery, greasy lotion does the trick. That should do it. The cursed ring exploded! It's a massive diamond engagement ring. Are you all right? Guybrush? Webb? Where are we? You're okay. We're on Blood Island. LeChuck's ring had a terrible curse on it, but I put everything right. You're safe and everything's gonna be fine. Just fine. Be well spoken, pet. But save your breath, lass. You'll be needing it for when you scream. I do. Where, where are we? Don't you be remembering this place, Freepwood. It was not long ago that I trapped you here to suffer tortures most foul. Wait, I can remember. I've seen this place before. Some terrible nightmare. It was no mere nightmare, Guybrush. Search your feelings. You know it to be true. Oh no. It can't be. 
But it is. This is the Carnival of the Damned. I, the Carnival of the Damned. You fiend, why have you brought us here? There'd be two reasons, you pathetic privateer. I'd be intended to torture and kill ye. And I'll be given Elaine a treasure. Ah, uh, you're wasting your time, LeChuck. Elaine's love can't be bought. Ah, but this be a very special treasure. This be the fabled treasure of Big Whoop. Big Whoop? Aye, the very pirate treasure you were searching for before I caught up with ye. What's so special about the treasure of Big Whoop? Isn't it just like any other pirate treasure? I see. Ye do not yet know the dreadful power that be Big Whoop. I guess not. Quake in fear, Threepwood. But I tell thee that Big Whoop be a damned portal to a demon netherworld. Okay. The treasures of Big Whoop be the very gates of hell themselves! Yay. But how will Big Whoop make Elaine love you? Elaine shall pass through the hoary gates of Big Whoop, just as I once did, down to the inky blackness of the infernal nether regions. For you see, Big Whoop gives those who pass through it the greatest gift of all, immortality. But at what cost? Cost? <laughs> Granted, the people may find me a bit unapproachable now, and the smell does take a while to get used to. But it'd be worth everything now that I have the power to make Elaine love me. But if you kill Elaine, won't she hate you even more? Aye, at first. But soon she'll be understanding what a grand gift eternal life be. And besides, the dating pool be surprisingly small when you're the living dead. She'll just have to give me another chance. This whole amusement park, why? The Big Whoop Carnival was my most brilliant idea. Once I had the power of Big Whoop at my command, I could make Elaine mine at last. I see. But again, why an amusement park? I'll be getting to that. I knew Elaine would need a little coaxing, and that I'd be needing an army. A horrible army of the undead. Okay, but why an amusement park? Are you going to let me finish? I'm not talking just to hear myself talk, you know. You're right. I've been rude. Please, go on. Everyone knows that the life of a seaman is a long, hard, lonely one. Sailors spend months longing for just a few days leave. And you know what they're looking for as soon as they get into port. Uh... A family-oriented fun park! Oh, that. <laughs> of course. They come to take a ride on the giant roller coaster, the Great Monkey Mountain. They reach the top of the highest peak, and then hands in the air, screaming like monkeys. They plunge down the slope into a great stream of lava. That doesn't sound the least bit fun. I. it's not. In fact, it's downright unpleasant. But when they reach the other side, they're fitting warriors for my skeletal army of the dam. How did you find Big Whoop? That'd be a long story. Are you sure you want to hear it? Does the torture start after we're done talking here? Aye. Go on, then. Back when I were alive, Elaine despised me. No. No, 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 it's true. I can see that now. She didn't like me at all. But I were determined to prove me worth to her, you see. So, I set sail to find the legendary secret of Monkey Island. Been there, done that. Well, I did it first, you nefarious nudibranch. branch. A few days after setting sail, my ship was caught in a terrible typhoon and was torn apart. I would have drowned, but some friendly sharks found me and set me ashore on Blood Island. There I was, marooned, with no hope of winning Elaine's heart. I thought me luck had run out, but one day a ship made port at Blood Island. 
'twas the ship of one Captain Marley, Elaine's own grandfather. I struck up a conversation with Rum Rogers Sr., first mate on the ship. And for the price of a few drinks, I learned that they had the map to the legendary treasure of Big Whoop. Although I had no ship and no money. Hold on. Does this go on for much longer? Although I had no ship and no money, I planned to beat Marley's crew to the treasure and take it for myself. I didn't have the money to buy a new ship, but I still had my greatest asset. The ability to kill bugs just by breathing? But I still had my greatest asset. That indefinable Chuck charm. One of the rich young debutantes on Blood Island was helpless against it. After a week with me, she would have followed me to the grave. Unfortunately for her, she didn't get the chance. I pried the diamond from her family's engagement ring and sold it to some cutthroat smugglers for the cost of a new ship. You scum! Hm, I've been called worse. With me new ship, I easily overtook Marley's crew and beat them to Big Whoop, which just so happened to be here on Monkey Island. I'm still confused about the carnival. Then ask me! As designer and founder, I can answer all your questions. How did you build an amusement park on a deserted island? The process begins with a winning design team. I scoured the Caribbean, looking for the best and brightest artists, engineers and creative people. After a lengthy period of intensive recruitment, intimidation, <laughs> and murder, I had my team at work, slashing and burning acres of old-growth timberland on Monkey and Dinky Islands. That must have been back-breaking work. Aye, that it was. Fortunately, hundreds of men were lost to malaria, wild animals, or construction accidents. <laughs> what kind of attractions do you have? Here at Big Whoop, we pride ourselves on the variety and authenticity of our attractions. We be using a magical blend of art, technology, and indentured servitude that we like to call Dynamo Monk Electrics. Frighteningly realistic skins and other body parts are attached to a framework of gears, servos, and pulleys. All constructed from a remarkably lightweight composite material. Fascinating. How do you power all the rides? That be a good question. As you may already know, the power of Big Whoop be derived from its position as an infernal nexus, binding our world with the unholy manifestation of evil itself. Well, of course. But like all fuel sources, it can't be lasting forever. That's why it be our job to conserve its demonic power wherever possible and look to alternative power sources. Solar? No. We tap our greatest natural resource. Monkeys! My word! Hordes of ruthlessly trained monkeys are hidden away deep within the bowels of the park, bound to immense machines of destruction and family entertainment. That's so inhumane! Oh, I'm glad you noticed. It be the little touches that make the difference. Mark my words, LeChuck. When I finally defeat you, I'll be sure to set them all free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's in the future for Big Whoop theme parks? The future is ripe with a world of possibilities. I see an entire network of theme parks throughout the world. Each will be unique and incorporate the cultures and customs of its specific area. But all will hold true to the same vision of the original park. The random, wholesale slaughter of the thousands of patrons who walk through our gates. I thought the treasure of Big Whoop was on Dinky Island. Dinky Island be an atoll just off the coast of Monkey Island. But they be connected by a maze of mysterious tunnels that run under the very ocean floor. 
So although you dug for treasure on Dinky, when you found me carnival, you were on Monkey Island. <laughs> Very tidy explanation. Aye. I've heard quite enough about your disgusting theme park. What happened to Captain Marley and his crew? Their ship arrived at Monkey Island a half hour after mine. But they were too late to stop me from claiming me prize. And they watched me pass through the port in the Big Whoop. Craven cowards that they were, the power of what they saw overwhelmed them. They fled the island in terror. Marley tore his treasure map into four pieces and gathered his crew around him. There was Rum Roger Sr., the first mate, Rap Scallion, the cook, and young Lindy, the cabin boy. Marley gave each a piece of a map, keeping one for himself. They promised to guard those map pieces with their lives. I saw to it that they kept their promise. They were the only people alive to know about Big Whoop. What happened to Rum Rogers Sr.? He was taking a bath in his cabin near Fat Island, drinking rum and eating toast, as he always did while bathing, when the toaster mysteriously fell into the tub with him. Shocking. His son inherited the map piece, but was too much of a drunkard to understand its importance. <laughs> what happened to Rap Scallion, the cook? Rap Scallion died in a flash fire in his weenie hut on Scab Island. That's right. I brought him back to life with a voodoo spell. I remember it so vividly. Guybrush. Guybrush. Oh, I'm sorry, I was miles away. What were you saying? I knew about Rap's absent-minded tendency to leave his gas burners on. So I arranged for a fully lit cake to be delivered to him on his 35th birthday. <laughs> you can hear the explosion as far as Booty Island. That's horrible. Steaming weenie indeed. What became of young Lindy, the cabin boy? Fearing for his life, he came to me and begged for mercy. In return for not revealing the location of Big Whoop, I let him live. As a sign of me gratitude, I gave him a fortune which he used to build a successful advertising firm. Once he had grown accustomed to his wealthy lifestyle, I returned to collect me debt. I delivered to him an account so demonically ill-conceived that it was doomed to fail. Gangrene and honey. Within a month, he was penniless and insane, a broken man. He sold everything he owned and got so desperate, he fell in with a traveling circus. He was killed when he was shot from a cannon without a helmet. No one could be that desperate. What fate befell Captain Marley? I ambushed him while he was racing in the America's Cup. I boarded his ship and decided to let him determine his own fate. He could grant me his blessing to have his granddaughter's hand in marriage, or he could suffer a death more horrible than any of his crewmates. Well, what'd he say? Actually, he said quite a few things. Oh, the pain. Stop it, you're killing me. some other things, I forget them all. I left him for dead and sent his ship into a whirlpool not even the most accomplished captain could escape. You're unbelievably ghastly and wretched. Ooh, thanks. <laughs> what is the secret of Monkey Island? The secret of Monkey Island? I could tell you, but I'd rather make you guess. That Rosebud is a sled? That's not it. Everyone knows that. No, it goes much deeper than that. It's an ancient secret, closely guarded uh, by the natives and uh, pirates who happen to... You don't even know the secret of Monkey Island, do you? No, not really. All right, then. Please don't kill me. Why shouldn't I? If you kill me... 
You'll crush the hopes of children all over the world. I'm a hero to millions. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that Elaine and I are together. And you are out of the picture for good! Pretty please, don't kill me. Why shouldn't I? If you kill me, you'll be in really big trouble. I'm one of the walking dead! Formed not of flesh and blood, but of fire and brimstone. How could I be in any more trouble? Yeah, well... Pretty please, don't kill me. Why shouldn't I? If you kill me, there'll be no more Monkey Island sequels. No sequels means no work for you. You'll become just another has-been that nobody's heard of. Oh, that could never happen to me. I'm LeChuck. Do you know the name Bobbin Threadbear? Uh, no. <laughs> exactly. Pretty please, don't kill me. Why shouldn't I? If you kill me, You'll ruin our reputation for making family-oriented games. We'll be scorned by parent watchdog groups everywhere. What'll you threaten me with next? Some ludicrous Senate subcommittee investigating violence in the media? Well, I'm shaking in my boots now. Elaine will never marry you. She loves me. She does not. She loves me. Nuh-uh. She loves me. Does not. Anyway, Elaine really loves me. Does not. Does two love me? Does not. Does two infinity? Does... Uh, ah! Curse you and your diabolical debate skills. But there'll be so many more horrible things I'd be wanting to tell you. I'm not listening to you anymore. See, I'm ignoring you. Ah, you'd better listen. La 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 la, I can't hear you. La 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 la. Very well, Freepwood. If you're going to act like a child, I'll help you get in the mood. I think you deserve a timeout, young man. Uh oh. Haha! <laughs> it's not locked! Your plan was flawless, LeChuck, except for one minor detail. That will be your downfall. He's taking Elaine on his roller coaster of death! I've got to reach her before she becomes his undead bride. What's happened to me? And foggy, can't... Think. I'm swimming. Must concentrate and rescue Elaine. I got to save Elaine. But how can I save Elaine when I'm just a little boy? If only I could think straight. Must clear my mind. <laughs> Welcome to the Big Wolf Carnival, little guy. Come on over here and meet your old pal Dingy Dog. Oh, for crying out loud. How can I win one of these fabulous prizes? Well, that's easy, <laughs> matey. If I can't guess your weight or your age, you get to pick what you want. What's the catch? <laughs> There's no catch. It's just that easy. I'll bet you can't guess how old I am. <laughs> bet you I can. A little fearsome buccaneer like yourself must be seven years old. Wrong. I just so happen to be 20. <laughs> well, do you have any proof for your old pal Dingy Dog? You calling me a liar? <laughs> you bet I am. <laughs> I have my proof right here. Scum Actors Guild membership card. Guybrush Threepwood, age 20? I suppose you're right. <laughs> Pick your prize. Give me that anchor. Well, take it away, son. Congratulations. <laughs> Enjoy your stay here at Big Wood. Look into your heart. I'm the prize. What? 
You pick the anchor? It's a really nice anchor, Murray. Sorry. I've got a pie pan full of shaving cream. I can't believe you picked that stupid anchor instead of me. Now it's a heavy pie pan full of shaving cream. What good is a dumb hunk of iron anyway? What are you doing over there? I found this pie, mister. Huh? Oh yeah, thanks, kid. Shoot it, shoot it. Not right now. Oh, but I want to see the cannon fire. Be cheeks, half pint. Look, man, I pay your salary. You want me to tell the check you've got unhappy kids running around here? Okay, okay, you little... <laughs> Did you just hear something? No. Weird. Maybe it's the acoustics of that smelly giant head. Shut up, kid! It's not even a real anchor. I'm a real fucking skull. After all we've been through- Yoo-hoo! Stinky Mr. Rat! Hey! Get out of there, you little punk! What are you gonna do about it, vermin boy? This'll teach you! Fine! Take the stupid anchor! You would have made a lousy undead monster anyway. <laughs> now that's not very nice, little boy. Come on now, stop hitting your pal, dingy dog. I'm going to wait for an owner who I'm not gonna warn you again, kid. <laughs> you better cut that out. Get out of here! <laughs> yeah, you're really starting to bug me, kid. All right. <laughs> that does it. You're going down, little punk. Ow, he bit me. Hey, give me back that hair, kid. You're ruining the suit. If you value your life, mere mortal, you will flee before Murray, scourge of the living, and uber skull of the underworld! What kind of snow cones do you have? <laughs> what kind of cones did you ask? Why, I have every kind imaginable. I have the most distinct type of snow cones in the world. In fact, my cones are so original, so inventive, and so <laughs> unique that most are completely inedible. Let me list some for you. I have sweet cones, meat cones, cold cones, mold cones, bold cones with lime, cones with slime, <laughs> veggie cones, wedgie cones, hedgy cones. I used some of my neighbor's edge in that one. Cones with spice, cones with lice, berry cones, hairy cones, dairy cones, and the Christmas, oh, 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 merry cones. So, what do you think of that? Hmm. I'd like a plain snow cone, please. Okay, kid. <laughs> Bye now. Harry. <laughs> that meringue looks tasty. Mmm, peppery goodness. Yeah. The pepper helps though. Ah, brain freeze. <laughs>
is only you. Have you seen the old lady? She told me she was just going to powder her nose, and I haven't seen her since. I can't be believe when I fell for that one again. Now stand still, boy, so I can flame broil. <laughs> Oh. So can oil and probably highly flammable. as if I can't help but love the little woman. Eat, flame, and death, you great word. Not forget your arch nemesis Murray. Mark my words, I shall return to haunt you. Do you hear me? I shall return. <laughs> this is so unfair.
carnival is great, Dad. It sure is, son. But you know, rumor has it that the man who built this place is buried here. And they say that to this day, his frozen body remains in the tunnels somewhere beneath the amusement park.